word that I use all the time when it comes to pastoring my own church or running any sort of organization is that this is a safe place. Uh, these are, this is an important word. This is a safe place. The question that I ask people, leaders in particular, are you the sort of leader that others feel when they step into your presence that it's safe? Are you the sort of leader that can be trusted? Now, there's all sorts of ways to ensure that you're that sort of person. It's going to come back to your character. It's going to come back to how you plan your day. It's going to come back to how you think. It's going to come back to how you listen. It's going to be come back to what you do with what you listen to. Am I dependable? Am I reliable? Some people think just by, you know, being punctual, turning up on time, that that creates a safe place. Well, friend, I would suggest to you that turning up on time, absolutely, be punctual. However, you want to be the sort of person that when you do turn up, you're prepared. I spend a lot of time with different groups talking about the word preparation, homework, knowing what you're going to say, saying what you mean and meaning what you say. You see, I think we need to get back to these words to let our yes be yes and our no be no. It's not fun to say no, but it does inspire trust because we know our limitations. I had a doctor many years ago, I'd love if he was my doctor today. However, I trusted him, not because he was the best doctor I'd ever met, not because he knew everything, but that he knew his limitations. And oh, do I wish more people knew their limitations. It inspires trust creates a safe place and I do remember talking to him on this one occasion and he said I I don't know the answer I was immediately surprised however he went on to say but I know someone who does he immediately made me feel safe you know if you're a preacher you're a pastor you don't have to have all the answers you just need to know someone who does and that's important that perhaps you might have surrounded yourself and I hope you have with good people I like to surround myself with smarter people than myself it makes me look good <laughs> if you know what I mean you, you want to get around people that are doing what you're dreaming as a leader if you're a parent to get around good other parents that you can model their strengths you see I found this also it's not about time management how many books have been written on time management here's what i know we all have seven days a week we all have 24 hours in a day and i've learned it's got very little to do with time management it's got everything to do with self management how i manage me will determine how i manage the environment around about me i've i've learned that listening is more important than talking now as a preacher because we all sort of seem to enjoy the sound of our own voice excuse me but it, you know, it's partly true however the truth is when i'm talking to somebody i really do want to listen because i've learned this if you're talking you're not listening if you're not listening you're not learning and when you do listen how do you handle the information that you're given are you wanting to give information back or are you wanting to give wisdom back? Wisdom is applied knowledge. You might not have all the answers and so you're going to have to go ahead and find that answer. You're going to have to look for that solution. You may need to pray about it. Don't be pressured by people to give a quick response. There are times, seriously, I need to, I say to people, come on, just let that sit with me for a bit, will you? Now that person will then feel safe, as they ought to. These two words, safe and trust, they're important. Do you validate the things you say as a speaker, as a leader, as a parent, as a teacher? Do you check it out? Do you make sure that what you've got to say, you know, is true and can be validated, can be checked out? That's the sort of leader, pastor, teacher, parent, 
that can be trusted. Am I a safe person? That's the question I'm asking you to ask yourself. Am I a person that others believe is safe to be around? Well, decisions have got a lot to do with it. The type of decisions that you make. I heard this many years ago, in fact, from my mother, who said to me, your care for others is a measure of your greatness. I would add to that and say that your care for others but also your care to be trusted and safe. Oh goodness, in this environment, with COVID and all the other things going on, you know, scary stories of people wondering what's going to happen or has happened. We need people not just to stand up. Oh no. We need people that will stand up on something, and that word is integrity. Am I an integral person? Integrity really is the capacity to bounce back. Like a ball is hit against the wall, loses its shape momentarily, but it bounces back. I've learned and I encourage you not to take on more than you can cope with. We, we all want to say yes to people, don't we? We all want to say, yep, I can do it. Now that's called a people pleaser. And I, I think that every person in the world to some degree is a bit of a people please at work because we want to see people pleased. But there's a recipe for mistakes, there's a recipe for you to break down being that person that isn't aware or hasn't considered your own personal limitations. Let me give you some steps to help be the sort of person that can honestly say, this is a safe place. This is a place where you won't get hurt. Well, you know, people end up hurting themselves, but the environment you create that you're responsible for can be a safe place. Number one, take steps to consider how you behave in a crisis. How you behave, how you, you, you process this. Do you pause and wait for wisdom? Or do you react? And there are times you have to react fast, but you know, and this gets back to that whole subject of emotional intelligence, doesn't it? That we not only are smart here, but how we articulate, how we process knowledge to others is important. So how do you create, how do you, can, how do you respond in a crisis? Number two, take steps to manage your exposure to trouble. That's not easy, because trouble all around the matters. However, once again, knowing our limitations will help. There are times we just want to take on too much. Whether it be lifting something that's too heavy, hurts our spine, taking on too many situations that hurt our heart, and break down our mind, and translate into a bad night's sleep. So number two, take steps to manage your exposure to trouble. You know, even that doctor I spoke about didn't see three or four patients all in one go. He saw one patient at a time, at a time. Number three, begin today to limit your promises to only those you can keep. There we go. You want to create a place that's safe for those that are with you and your family and your church and the organization that you run? then consider the promises that you make. Nobody likes a promise breaker. However, some people mean well. They mean so well that they make promises to pretty much everybody and then end up breaking half of them and they lose trust. They didn't mean to lose trust. They just didn't realize that there came a point at which they had to manage the promises that they made. Build your character. I often say to people, if you look after your character, your reputation, uh, it's going to look after itself. We want to be the sort of people that are dependable, that are reliable. We want to be the sort of people that have integrity, that bounce back. We want to be the sort of people that can manage ourselves. Now, that doesn't happen overnight, but as they say, it will happen. If we consider daily, constant and never-ending improvement, to improve me, will improve everything around about me. That it's learning to listen. Now some people 
only listen so that you'll stop talking so they can speak. You want to be that person. And, uh, you know, you, you think you've got the answer and so you, you'll jump right in there. It's good to hear that pe person out. You've probably heard the saying, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Am I a safe person? That's the question. Are you a safe person in your personal behavior, in your thought life, in how you manage an environment around about you? If you're not the sort of person that can handle a crowd of 50 people, but you are the sort of person that can look after a crowd of five or 10 or 20, well, do that. Know your limitations. Step into the environment that you are capable of. Now you'll grow and you'll expand. And as you do all of these things and more, then your capacity will grow with it. So in closing, and you ask yourself this question, are you a safe person? Then let me conclude by saying, look after your character and your reputation 